How you going, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is Jetsimmer here, and today we are back in the PC-12. Now, this is a follow-up uh, from the other video that we had a look at, the first look video of the PC-12. And you, if you watched it uh, as a shambles that it was, I am not quite proud of the video. I should have made another one. Uh, but I just did not have time, but that's okay. But anyways, if you watch the video, I went through the GPS, and uh, there is a couple of options that you can have. You can have the default option, uh, the 750 from PMS, and the 750 or the 650 from uh, a, another source that I have just recently purchased on myself, and we're going to have a quick look at it. I've already had a look at it myself, uh, because I read through it, and apparently it goes for a few different aircraft. Um, as well, so uh, the aircraft that I have tested so far is the Arrow from Just Flight, and it works in that one perfectly fine. Uh, I haven't tested in this one just yet. Um, that is what this video is for. So first look in the, in the PC-12, and uh, I believe other aeroplanes uh, in the future for Carinado will also uh, utilize the uh, stuff as well. But before we go any further, let's just have a quick look at. Uh, the window that I'm just going to show you here and uh, so we'll just pop that there and here is the window okay so when you download the window for the f uh, for the uh, first time you'll see a whole bunch of different things here so uh, you'll also have another window for your installing and all that sort of stuff but then you can uh, once you've unlocked the Garmin thing now these displays here, I have a feeling this is for if you've got displays that you want to show um, uh, in your uh, screens, like uh, your pop-out screens. Um, so yeah, um, install display sort one. It will run when it is powered on. Uh, display sort two. I'm not 100% sure what any of these. Um, so you, you can configure them and um, do all sorts of lovely cool things. Uh, so, I guess if we just power the uh, avionics up, there you go. So, it's like a pop-out screen. So, there you go. So, if you want a, a pop-out screen uh, for your uh, aeroplane, um, yeah, you can put those into your things. And it's, it's really, really good. Now, you're not actually seeing what I'm seeing here. So, let's uh, really quickly show you what um, I just did. I just need to chuck on a display capture. We'll have to put that there, and we'll put that there. Okay, and I'll pop it over. So once I turn the power on, this is what popped up here. Now the aircraft's not turned on, so there is a few different bits and pieces. So this would go, uh, so you can drag it off screen uh, and then put it into your um, like tablet or your secondary screens. Um, if you're having a cockpit, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the reasons being is because you can like completely set it up the way you want. And we'll have a look at that in a little while. And you can even uh, go through the database and check how much fuel you got on board and a whole bunch of really cool things uh, here. You'll, and we have a Tours, whole- system test, okay. As you can hear the TORS systems going up there, you got like a dual kind of map sort of thing. Or you can have like that sort of all sorts of different stuff there, which we can have a look at later on. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you what it was about. about. So if we can power that down now, we can also check slot two. Now, if you want to have a look at slot two, I think we might have a look at doing something like that. Uh, so that's a 700. Now, if we have a look over here, uh, we have the, so what, let's put the 700 panel there and we'll put the smaller one here. So uh, use the plus signs uh, to have a look. So if we power this on, uh, a high uh, performance computer may be required. I think I have it, so let's just check. Uh, if you don't have a high powered, you might only be able to do the two. Um, but yeah. So here again, we have the, so it looks like we've got like, um, I'm not 100% sure what that is. Something to do with autopilot possibly. Uh, so I'll put that out the side. You also have the Agama display here uh, that just has your engines and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you have your trainer here that has like um, some smaller things. 
So if you don't, like you can completely set the this display thing up um, to anything you want really. We'll just, just do the 700 now. So it's only going to show you that. That's okay. Uh, I didn't really have a look at this part of this sim. Uh, or, or of this part of the simulator. Um, the Garmin. Uh, I, I was just having a really quick look over it. Uh, so you can go into other things like here, the TXI. So I think that's what we were just looking at just then. So you can grab this bigger one here. Um, but if this is not your forte uh, with these type of ones, uh, you can... Uh, so that's powered off. Uh, you can go in here and... I, this is the 600 version. Uh, so we'll click the best version. You can uninstall those other ones if you wish. I've uh, installed them all. And then here's the other one. Uh, Alright, so now we've got a display here. This is for multi-engine. You can have single engine. So if we go back to single engine, it's got that. Uh, so you can set them all up for the different ones that you want. So we'll just open up this one. See what this one's all about. Alright, so this is your um, split one. And it's got like little buttons here. You don't need these buttons, um, but they are there to utilize them. But this is obviously if you're going to use a secondary screen um, that has buttons already around the outside for all sorts of different sorts of stuff. So, cool. Um, there's one thing that I wanted to. Now, I'm going to set this back to default. Uh, and I want to show you real quickly, uh, because we are a single engine turbo, uh, we're going to take that back to the version 40. And we'll put that on back there. Alright, so we're a single engine turbo. We can also have a look at the... Um, so we're a GTN XI. So GTN XI, make sure that we are using the best version possible. And then you can have a look here, all the different GTN XI versions that you uh, want. Um, I'm not 100% sure what is what here, but you've got a whole bunch of them. So if you just don't, if you don't want the 750, there's a 725. You get a 650, 635, and 625. Uh, it's really up to you. So this is obviously the better one, uh, and then you've got your other slots here. Um, so we have the again 700, all that sort of stuff. This one's uh, pretty cool, and then we'll just hit power on. So this is our multi-engine turbo, and it should power on to what we want. So that will be on the left hand side and then we'll have this as our secondary um, no nothing in database I don't know why fuel databases continue how much fuels on board zero and uh, vice versa um, but we'll get all into this so this is for if you have TAS system test the okay. tablets and all that sort of stuff so that's what that is and it's really good setup uh, so yeah so this is a 725 so I'll just power that off, uh, and you can set up how you want. Settings, you'll have all your settings and stuff here. Uh, these are the version managers, so if um, you just have a look there, you don't want this version down here, you can uninstall it. I've just got them all installed just to have a look, but obviously, okay, so that's the best version. If you don't like that one, you just want to jump back to the other one, go for it. I think they keep three in here at any one time. Uh, then you have the smaller ones for if you're just flying a Cessna or an Arrow. Um, and then uh, the other ones down here. Resources has everything about the resource uh, for your preferred one. Screenshots if you got any, and then the amount of these guys. Um, now to have this one open, uh, you need... Now if I just bring the thing up, there is another little thing here called Sim Interface. Now I don't know if this is actually going to open. Okay, so this is the interface here uh, that needs to be on whilst this simulator is running. Alright, so here you'll have your avionics. Here you'll have your settings. So in your settings, you'll have all your different units. Select a setting to config. Um, and then you can select what is there. Okay. <coughs> Fuel type, av gas, or jet A. Uh, it's really up to you how you do it. Uh, transponder settings. Um, 
So, so EU and US. So we just use the US one. Uh, aeroplane type, low wings, high wing, kit plane. So you'll set it up for how you want. Obviously, I'm a turboprop, so I'd have it for turboprop. Uh, and you'll set that up for what you want. Uh, the tours, that's a B. So you set your one what you prefer. Uh, I think it was B. The voices, male or female. Uh, aeroplane color type is white, magenta. Um, now, do we... I'm not 100% sure what... I think we use in the turboprop, Jet A for the turboprop. I don't think... We don't use Avgas. I think it's A. Can someone tell me what the difference is between B and A? I don't know. I'm going to say that. Um, play key sounds, play audio sounds. Um, so, yeah, you can set all of that up. So, that's uh, pretty cool there. And then you have other, other bits and pieces. So, you can set both of them up. It's however you want to set it up. Um, Sucker navigation source. Not 100% sure what they mean by that. But, yeah. Um, then you have your avionics. Alrighty, so without further ado now, let's get back on into the sim and we shall have a look at what's going on. Alrighty. Let's jump out of there or we'll set up. Now we had a plane. That's because I'm looking at Brisbane, that's what that jerky was, and the plane is in the ground, of course. Okay, anyways, we're in the plane and the first thing you want to do in this particular plane, if you have the PC twelve from have I been saying PC-21? Uh, the PC-12 from Carinado, my correction, sorry there, guys, uh, will come out of this tablet, uh, if you can remember. So if we switch over here, you'll notice that we have this one installed. Once activated, you have to... Uh, once activated, it is not possible to deactivate and fly. It will be... Uh, uh, you'll have to reset the simulations, and blah, blah, blah. So now if we have a look, we have a new... Um, as you can see, yeah, okay, so we can't activate it anymore, but we have a new uh, GPS system for the aircraft right there. So, as you can see, the GTN 750 is installed, but not from PMS. It's actually this one here, it's just taken over. So I think the guys from PMS um, sold it to these guys, I'm not 100% sure, and these guys have just made it 10 times better. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's start the aircraft up. I think I was hitting something down there, but I don't know. Anyways, so we'll start the aircraft up. Um, let's grab... Is that he driving away, upside down? I don't know how they managed to have these bugs still in the game. Like, that is just pitiful. Let's chuck external power on. Um, we'll chuck some avionics on, just like that. And as you can see, the Garmin opens up. Now, if that Garmin does not open up like that... Now, that is my name, unfortunately. I can't do nothing about it. I could blur it out, but that's okay. Everyone knows me as Jetsima. Anyways, uh, the good thing is, is it doesn't show your license key. <laughs> I made sure of that. Uh, but anyways, if you um, <coughs> don't start the um, that third-party uh, software... That is what it will look like when you start. And you'll be like, hey, I've turned my avionics on. Uh, that would be because you haven't turned the third-party software on. But once that's done, um, then it will pretty much open up like that. And you can hit continue. Uh, database, however, I need to figure out what's going on with that. Database here, as you can see. Now, let's do that so it doesn't jerk around. Now, as you can see, it's from the 2004 uh, ARAC cycle, which I don't believe it is correct, as we can see there. Expired 20th of May 21. So we want to kind of 
get this updated eventually so I'll figure out how to do that at a later date uh, and I'll show you later now this fuel on board in the real uh, 750s or any of the the uh, ones that I've used in the past like 530s uh, 750s 650s uh, we actually put in how much fuel with a keypad here uh, once we've dipped the tanks and all that sort of stuff uh, but if you just grab the fuel here and uh, play with the fuel as you can see the the fuel uh, goes down all right so I just put a bit of we got eight eight kilogram pilots a day might um, we'll just say the pilots that heavy today 83 kilos everyone's 83 kilos but as you can see <coughs> we have 406 gallons on board now you can pro possibly change that from somewhere else uh, and then yeah so you have a few other bits and pieces there and it kind of tells you I think it's 150 uh, if we have a look over here uh, that's 09 so I'm not 100% sure what any of those uh, mean uh, right there um, I'm still training or learning but yeah normally you'd punch in your own fuel but in the sim it does it for you alright the first things here uh, it's going through its TORS test right now and you'll hear that as you heard it just before TARS, system there it is. Test okay. Alrighty, and you have a few other bits and pieces so you'll have your custom uh, messages pop up you'll also have your map now this is the pretty cool thing about this map you can actually move it with your mouse <coughs> now a really cool thing about this um, hotspot info as you can see caution runway intersection refers to URSA local traffic regulations hotspots mean the pink as you can see down here so runway incursions so I was having a look at those before so you'll see runway incursions uh, at the um, your aerodrome now this is Archer Field here in Australia uh, in Brisbane this is the airfield that I take off from and you can really check to see what these runways are um, now this runway here and this runway here are grass now this one is not grass but it is a very smaller runway now they do depict that okay so this one here is technically asphalt the one over here should be asphalt but it's not uh, and then the fours are also ash uh, they're grass but they will be uh, still grass in the future too uh, so we have uh, certain different things here I don't know what that means visual oh okay cool so you can kind of select an approach pretty quickly alright so that's okay that's all right. So you just click on that, and it kind of gives you an idea of what the uh, the go is. Or you can click on it in a wrong way. All right. So that's pretty much um, everything right there. Now the uh, other thing that we can have a look at. Uh, this is how you change your CDI. If you yeah, know, uh, need to know. Uh, and then you have a whole bunch of other things. You have your topo, which is your terrain. You have perception, so your weather radar, your terrain radar your traffic radar and your charts now charts will only work in the US they don't work anywhere else uh, so if you want to fly this aircraft around or this GPS in an aircraft that it works in uh, the arrow um, from just flight works in it so I'm guessing anything from just flight will have this capability so the arrow the warrior um, well within reason uh, so some of the aircraft may not but most of the just flight aircraft are compatible with this uh, GPS setup we also have the radar as well uh, so we'll have a look at a few bits and pieces <coughs> so as you can see now we've moved over to flight plan and it automatically puts in the airport that you're from uh, which is really cool is the traffic radar now you can zoom in and out on this radar here so that's four nautical miles six nautical miles 12 and you can see right up to 48 nautical miles with this um, GPS which is really really good so it's really up to you uh, what your awareness is I would like 12 to 6 nautical miles from me just so I can have a little bit more time to uh, react than if it was in close okay here's your terrain radar so you don't have to have the terrain radar on 24 7 you can just use this one and then you have SXM which I am not 100% sure what that is uh, so if anyone knows what that is please tell me um, yeah so that's that not 100% sure 
Uh, but then if we move over to the nearest, now it is nearest for like airports and all that sort of stuff. So if we click on Brisbane right here, it brings up a whole bunch of stuff for just Brisbane. So we can preview Brisbane. We can find the procedures at Brisbane, the runways, frequencies that Brisbane uses in the real world if you use the um, the in-game ATC. Or if you're on VATSIM as well, VATSIM end up using these uh, in the real world, so you'll be able to use it. You can find out the weather in real time, which is really, really good uh, as well. So the Brisbane observation. So if you want to know what the we uh, weather is in a particular location, if it doesn't have it, it'll just say no matter. But if it does have it, this is what will show up. And then no TAMs. There's obviously no no TAMs available. So if we go back, let's see if um, Archerfield, Brisbane, Australia, Archerfield has any meta. See, no meta. Uh, now I know for a fact that Archerfield does have meta uh, in the real world, but it just does not show up there. So really, if you just want to go and check out what the meta is, I can just go to Brisbane or Amberley, and I'll just pick one that I think is the better of the two. And uh, we'll, go, we'll run with that. But as you can see, the flu, few clouds scatter clouds, overcast at 69 temperature, they're pretty much the same. QNH is 1015, so if we go back to Brisbane, uh, we'll probably see roughly about the same in the weather. It's about 16, but as you can see, the clouds are roughly about the, the same. Uh, the temperature is 1 degree difference, and dew point is 1 degree difference. QNH is a uh, one off so about 40 meters so yeah <coughs> 40 meters 40 feet but that's okay that's not a big deal um so that is your nearest right there so you can go and get rid of all of that sort of stuff there the other cool thing about this is if we go here you can just click on traffic uh and all sorts of different features uh it has all your emergency things uh smart guy disable until reaching uh, 10, 1000 AGL. So we'll have a look at that real quickly. Uh, so we'll take the plane up in the air and we'll have a look and see what that happens. Then you have systems, system status. So you can go through all sorts of different things here. So it is, it is really good. So we are connected to quite a few GPSs in the game. Hashtag simulators. Uh, but yeah, that in the real world, that's what it will look like. If you weren't connected to a particular GPS, you might have yellow. Well, because we're in the sim, we've got all of them, and it's nice and green, which is really cool. Uh, so set up, you have your auto CD uh, scale, uh, auto switch. Uh, you have your local time if you want to change that, um, and all that sort of stuff. Startup page, you can actually have the startup page set for the map, and I'm going to have it set for the map, why not? And uh, yeah, so alerts, does that even work? Yep, so alerts work. You can have uh, an arrival alert, so if you're using um, uh, the sim for like long distance traveling and you're not going to sit in front of the aircraft all the time, you can go ahead and sit an alert for like 20 nautical miles away uh, or your top of descent, which would be really, really good uh, with this GPS. Um, obviously, if you're not wearing your headset, you won't hear it, but, but this is what I wanted to change because I don't really use gallons here in Australia. We use liters, um, so I finally found it. <coughs> Uh, feeds per minute, I use that. Nautical miles, I use that. Uh, magnetic variation, you can't change that, but that's exactly what it is here in Australia. It's 11 degrees east, uh, right here in um, Archerfield. And you can choose magnetic or true. Now, I believe if you use true, it's zero, obviously. Um, that is if you're using the map, but we are not using a map. We want magnetic variation. And, if, uh, and then you can have all your other bits and pieces uh, set. So... There we go. Oh, that's a little bit changed. Oh, and the inches of mercury. Uh, we use hectopascals, so I'll use hectopascals. Thank you very much. Alrighty. Um, so that's in your units there. If you did not know. So the audios, you can have your click volume all the way up or down. Your brightness levels, up to you what you want your brightness to be. Uh, your contact setup and your page shortcuts. If there is any page shortcuts that you really, really, really want, uh, there, there you go. So yeah. Cool. Alright, so that brings us to utilities. Now, there's a whole bunch of cool things here in the utilities. So you have your fuel planning. Uh, I've had a real quick look at this, like, really quickly. Um, so let's just say we're going from 
uh, y bath uh, b a f and y bath there to um, y b c g <coughs> not b c f um, b c g thank you very much so we're going down the Gold Coast. Okay, point to point, okay. Um, flight plan. I reckon we'll just go point to point. So we're going to use our actual one. Or we can use, yeah, so we just use our position to the Gold Coast. View sensor data. Um, our fuel flow. So sensor data, like if you're in the air, um, that'll take out what's in the air. But if you just want to like do, say ground speed is uh, 355, I think I had this aircraft going at one stage. Um, fuel on board is that. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the fuel flow is, just say 54.0 for the sake of it. I don't know why I would be using 54, like, it might be more, it might be less. But as you can see there, 28 hours, that is not correct whatsoever. Um, 28 hours, 27 minutes. 26 seconds. Uh, not 100% sure. It could be 20 minutes. Um, but anyways, that is not correct. Uh, so don't to take it with a pinch of salt. I was just showing you uh, what this page does, which I think is really, really cool. Now, that is just a random guess. Uh, obviously, if you've done all of your uh, calculations, you put them all in here and you'll be like, oh, yeah, cool. I've got the reserve, how much I have left, how much I have completely, uh, the fuel at. So, yeah my range I do not have 10,000 nautical miles range in this aircraft and the fuel efficiency uh, is 6.6 .6 nautical miles to the liter <coughs> um, yeah uh, but obviously you'd be using this one here use sensor data from the actual aircraft when it's flying in the air uh, but uh, other than that if you have that already go for it uh, so the next one is uh, I just want to have a really quick look at this one. This is pretty cool uh, Point to point uh, departing time September. Let's say ground speed is 350 again uh, Just for the sheer sake of it just so you can have a good check at it 16 minutes 38 seconds local time I think ETA 7 minutes and 20 ETA Estimated time of arrival estimated time on route Sunset, sunrise, uh, sunrise, sunset. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it kind of tells you when you should land if you, you're you doing VFR, uh, which is cool. Um, 5,300 feet. I'm not 100% sure if that's your altitude or whatever. But again, you can, it looks like you can use sensor data, <coughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Departure date, uh, if you want to select all of that sort of stuff, which I think is really, really cool as well. So, um, yeah. Go, go for that. That's your trip, planning a trip. Uh, this thing again, I'm not 100% sure what D alt. Um, maybe it is the um, pressure. True airspeed wins. Again, you sensor data and it kind of gives you an idea what's happening right now. Pressure altitude, um, three temperature track. Cool. So that's that's basically what that is. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, well, that one, yeah, so, for planning purposes only. Uh, then you have RIM protection, uh, prediction. Um, yeah, set up a waypoint. All of this stuff I'm going to have to go through with you guys in a later one, just so we can have a really good quick look at it. So, probably won't go flying now, because this is going to be a very long video. Uh, but, yeah. If there is any certain things that you guys want to have a look at or whatever... Um, definitely uh, get on the comments and we can go over it and have a look. Uh, if you have a uh, particular, like if you're really going all out with this aircraft and you want um, to remember something, you can type in notes um, if you are trying to like do something as realistic uh, as possible. Um, so you're on time. We have an event uh, at this particular time local. Uh, there you go. Um, we can even go here, edit the message. What was the event type? Um, it was an event uh, note. So thunderstorm, it was an event uh, at the time. Um, or 
we are on time uh, and yeah so if, if you just want to have a look at uh, certain things along a long haul that's what you would put in there uh, just so there was something there and then you have your flight log data if there is any flight log data uh, which I think is um, pretty cool so you can export all your flight log data uh, into your printer and print it out uh, it'll be somewhere on your computer and you can download and print it out um, which I think is pretty cool and we just had a timer just buzz just then um, you got your VNAV, uh, which we will have a look in the future. So yeah, that's the utilities. There is a lot there, guys. Definitely use it if you need it. Uh, then you've got your contacts. I'm not 100% sure what the, uh, contacts here are going to be. <coughs> uh, can we actually call people in the game? I really hope not. Uh, I'm going to test this out. I'm not going to do it on, because I don't want everyone having my mobile number. But if this actually works, um... Uh, That'll be cool. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, as for email addresses, save contact. Uh, I don't know. Let's just pick a random number. Uh, 0489. No, 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 no. I will enter that. Save contact. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if that actually works. Um, we got a phone here, and uh, can you actually call people? Um, that'd be cool, if you can. Uh, so, you could be flying along and actually call someone through your aeroplane. Yeah. Send an SMS. Yeah, all right. I'm going to test that out. That, that looks actually pretty promising. Um, not too sure. All right, so charts here. Uh, no information <coughs> uh, ready. Um, I think that's all based on... Uh, let's go YBBN. Yeah, it'll probably be only LAX or like um, America's sort of. L... Um, um, so let's go charts. KLX, KLX, Los Angeles. So yeah, the the charts are only for America only, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, they'll they'll use pretty much as realistic as possible straight out of Jefferson charts, uh, and you can change whatever you want, hotspots, all sorts of different things. I'm not gonna go fully into it. That's up to you guys. Now, apart from that, um, yeah, everything is pretty cool. Uh, so there is one thing that I wanted to test out, and that's this one. Uh, and we're not going to go fully into this. All right, I'm just going to set everything up. And we're just going to start the aircraft as realistic as possible. As, as unrealistic as possible. Yeah, that plane spinning around out there is really annoying, that whole video. So I hope that hasn't been drowning your ears out. But anyways, without further ado, we're just going to do the unrealistic thing, guys. So we're above a thousand feet. Now, if we have a look here, no emergency mode activated, smart guard. So that's pretty cool. No airports in range. 
So it's telling us our glide range right now. Now, obviously, there's a mountain to our left. So this is really cool for emergency landing practices. All right, so it's kind of telling us, okay, so we got something out here to our left that we could possibly go into. But yeah, so if we were to turn around, okay, so if I just... So as you can see, now I had a little play with this in the real aircraft. So it kind of gives you an idea of where you can and can't go. So as you can see, it's going around the mountain there. So this is our glide. So I can turn the glide off. Uh, so it's telling us to squawk, cancel the glide, squawk mode. So tuning for 700. Uh, 7,000. So our glide range, right? Ooh. Will possibly be So that's Archerfield training area. So you can select on all different types, which is really cool. Yeah, nice. No, not bad. So it should say that we have no airports in range still. So yeah, there's, there's a few things that I might have to have a, have a tweak on. See how we go with them and go from there, eh? But if we go here and cancel the glide. And now Smart Glide is off. Which I find quite fun. Is there auto throttle in this... Uh aircraft. That's pretty cool. Does it just keep wanting to go forward for some reason? But anyways. I hope that helps. And I really hope to see you guys uh, use this GPS in the future. It is a really nice looking GPS. And... By far, I'm really loving it. Considering it is only 81 Australian dollars 
and um, it can go in more than one aircraft. I quite thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, for a first look at all its systems and what it can and can't do, uh, I didn't see anything that it can't do yet, so uh, I really hope that it helps people um, who are setting up cockpits look for something that can actually be quite realistic for you. So thank you very much guys, and until next time, I really hope uh, I see you uh, soon. So, yeah, thank you very much. See you guys.